and God is on. Welcome to the band of the hand of the son of man, the guild of the spirit filled, the special forces of re supernatural resources. We're so glad to see you guys today. Hope you're having a great summer. Hey, welcome to God on. God on is a vlog, a daily weekday vlog where we talk about what God says on different practical everyday faith subjects, faith lifestyle subjects. And so welcome to God on. We've been talking about praise and worship. Our theme scripture has been Genesis 22. And uh, let me read that right now. Verse 11 through 13. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. And he said, Lay not your hand upon the lad, neither do anything unto him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing that you have not withheld your son, even your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram was caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering instead of his son, Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. So in other words, one of the first covenant names of God is Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide himself a an offering. The Lord will provide himself a seed. The Lord will provide himself a ram, a sacrifice in the Old Testament way of thinking. So thank God Jesus is the final and last sacrifice. He said it is finished. We've gone from the sacrificial system to the seed system in the New Testament. Speaking of the New Testament, our theme scripture in the New Testament is Romans 12, 1. Uh, and it says, Be, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourself a living sacrifice unto God, just like Isaac that you present your bodies a living sacrifice unto God, holy and acceptable. <clears throat> holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and neither be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is a good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So in other words, here's the twofold, the two horns of the ram of Jireh, uh, that you present your bodies, and that you uh, be transformed in your mind. And that's basically what praise and worship is all about. It's the conquest of the two last dynasties that need to be brought under the control of the Holy Spirit. Okay, Our spirit man is born again once we accept Christ and we enter into the kingdom of God. We confess Christ is our Lord. We confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that he is risen from the dead. And... Uh, we're born again. <clears throat> but then, after we're born again, we have to conquer this. We have to cast down imaginations here. And we have to uh, cause this body or this flesh, okay, to come under control. So we have, to con we have to transform our minds and we have to bring the lust of the flesh under control. How does that happen? Well, it, it happens by praise and worship, the twofold witness, the cloven tongue of fire of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. All right? And have you been baptized in the Holy Spirit since you believed? And that's the big question. So there's another definite work of grace for us as we're walking with Christ, even after we're born again. It's called the baptism of the Holy Spirit, Acts 1.8. You shall receive power after that. The Holy Spirit is come upon you. See, Christ comes within us, and the Holy Spirit comes within us when we're born again. The disciples were already uh, receivers of the Holy Spirit. The night after Jesus rose from the dead, he breathed upon the disciples in the upper room and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. But then he said, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and you shall be a record of God, a, a record of me in the earth and that happened on the day of Pentecost. So when the day of Pentecost came, there were cloven tongues like a cloven hoof of a, of a uh, deer or a uh, cow. The cloven tongues of fire that sat upon each one of their heads representing praise and worship. 
representing the twin horns of Jireh, of Mount, of the mountain of the Lord, which is Zion, which is the headquarters of praise and worship, which is the headquarters of the temple, and also the palace of the king, Mount Zion. Both of those buildings were there. So you're a king and a priest. We're called to be kings and priests unto God to offer up the sacrifices of praise and also to offer up worship unto God. Now, we've been talking about <clears throat> God's alarm clock, which is the shofar uh, in the past few days. But now let's talk for a minute about the holy anointing oil. So the Ram of God, Jesus being the Lamb of God, according to John the Baptist, sent to take away the sin of the world. Abraham saw the ram caught by both horns in the thicket. The thicket was the thorns. Jesus wore the crown of thorns. The, corn is, uh, the thorns, rather, are symbols of the curse. Okay. So Jesus was caught by his horns, power and authority. He has all power. He has all authority. Those are the horns. It's the power horn of praise, the authority horn of worship. <clears throat> he was caught by his horns in <clears throat> the curse on Calvary. He was sacrificed, he was offered up, and Jesus said, Abraham saw my day and was glad. So God gave him a revelation and a vision of what Jesus would do for us as our Messiah, our Christ, our Lord, to save the world. And in the mountain of the Lord, the vision shall be seen. It's the Jehovah Jireh place. That's where the vision is seen. That's where the vision takes place, all right? The mountains of Moriah, one of those mountains is Calvary as well as Zion. So let's look at the horn of worship. The holy uh, anointing horn is brought to light in Scripture back in the days of uh, God's command to Jehovah, to Samuel, to go and anoint David, the son of Jesse, in the town of Bab Bethlehem, First uh, Samuel 16.11. You remember, Samuel was the last of the judges, the book of Judges. Israel wanted a king, and so, uh, first of all, previously, Samuel had anointed the first king of Israel, Saul, with a, with a vial of oil. So it was a box. It was some kind of a man-made container, according to 1 Samuel 10, 1. It means a man-made flask or a box. So God rejected Saul from being king. He was the man-made king. He had a man-made anointing. Uh, we, don't, we don't need uh, some type of manipulated anointing, man-made anointing. We don't need fire from off of a man-made altar. We need holy fire. All right? So God rejected Saul from being king because of disobedience and pride and arrogance, cutting off his, his dynasty, his man-made line of anointing. <clears throat> the anointing made from men can't compete with the anointing horn of worship and authority from uh, the Ram of God, Jesus the Messiah. So <clears throat> this is proven scripturally because God gave David the dynasty forever of kingship in the house of Israel in 2 Samuel 7, 16 and 17. So the shofar of God is the power of praise. It's hollow at both ends, representing the, the body and the soul of man, exercised through the action of praising God. All right? The holy anointing horn is hollow at one end, and it's representing only the spirit of man uh, or the, yeah, the absolute, absolutely spirit of man worshiping in spirit and in truth, okay? So the act of praise is, is the power of war. The act of worship is the power of interaction uh, and uh, uh, priority. It is the act, it results from priority, it results from preeminence, it results from uh, being part of the household of faith, the royal line of God. And so we're, we're privy to God's information, secret information, 
that is kept from the enemy, Satan. So the act of praise is war. The act of worship is the love of God expressed between us and God to the world. All right? So uh, Jesus told the woman at the well the Father was working, looking for worshipers everywhere that worship in spirit and in truth. Worship is redeemed, <coughs> is reserved rather, only for the redeemed wife of Jehovah or bride of Christ, which means natural Israel or the redeemed church of the Lord Jesus. All right? The church being the spirit, we've been grafted into the Abrahamic covenant by the spirit through faith. <coughs> According to Galatians 3, 13 and 14, Romans eleven seventeen. So we're, we're grafted together to make one new man of worship. Okay. So we still have prophets, priests, and kings today in the church. We're a prophetic people. We're a, we're a priesthood people. And we're a royal people. All right. So claim that. <clears throat> Lord, I'm believing for the anointing of the seer in the mountain of the Lord. It shall be seen. Lord, the, the prophet, the priest, Lord, that we offer up holy offerings unto you. Our life would be a living sacrifice unto you, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. And I pray in Jesus' name we be not conformed to the world system, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And we ask in Jesus' name that we would walk in the royalty and the power of the household of faith, because God is on.